This is where we take long walks on the beach. You know, for the last seven years, hook shots has largely been about fishing where the common angler fishes, which is why a few years ago, we shot a peacock bass show in the public canals down in Miami. And I gotta tell you, I kind of fell in love with those fish on that trip. So needless to say, when my good buddy Kevin Jarnigan from Pure Fishing called me and said, hey man, I have an opportunity for us to go to Brazil, down to the Amazon and chase these things, you know what my answer was. And you also know there was no way I was gonna go on such a badass trip and not roll cameras. Of course, catching them in Florida means hopping a flight to Miami. Getting after the big boys in the middle of the Amazon jungle, well, that's a little bit more of a trek. Okay, so when we're putting this trip together, the main thing we've gotta do is we've got to end up in Rio Negro Lodge. But it all starts in Manaus, which is the biggest metropolitan city in the Amazon. We got here with all of our sh Yes, do you want a hug? Oh, come on. Uh, the only ways to get there is by plane or by boat. So we're getting a tour of the city and there's a little bit of flavor going on here. We've got the fish market. I'll be totally honest with you, as cool as this is, it is rank in here. And uh, I'm not sure I'd eat anything out of this market. Dude, I'd eat it twice. So we roll up to a marina and you really don't know what to expect. We know we're getting on a big ship. So we are officially on the Rio Negro, about to get on the mothership. The Amazon Santana. I mean, we roll up on this thing and are just like, that is a hell of a home away from home. You're talking about nice staterooms, a fully stocked bar. Organizing the bunk space. Hey, we actually get to fish our way up to our next destination, which would be Rio Negro Lodge. And so we're dragging a ton of boats behind us. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty wild to sit on the top deck of this boat in the darkness, looking at the Manaus skyline. You know, as you sit there and you watch the lights disappear, you know that when you wake up the next morning, you're not gonna be anywhere near the creature comforts of that city. Now it was explained to us that on that first day of fishing, we were gonna be in pretty good water, not great water, and the further up we went, the closer we got to the lodge, the better the peacock fishing was gonna get. But I mean, we didn't care. We just wanna get off the boat and go throw some lures around. So you come to the Amazon, your one goal is to catch monster peacock. But those in the know will tell you that the real money experience is catching a big peacock on a wood chopper. I go chop chop. Now the wood chopper, may just look like a simple plug that you sit there and roll along, but it's a lot of work. If your shoulders are not dying after ripping that thing for 10 casts, you are not working it hard enough. And this is when we got our first big lesson about fishing on the equator. You don't tank 10 beers and no waters the night before you get on a bass boat in the Amazon. It's hot. You get out there, and you start fishing, and you're like, oh, man, I could do this all day. And then all of a sudden, it just slows down, and you're like, oh, this is freaking miserable. We are working for it, man. This is like, this is musky fishing, and it's 110 degrees outside. And you know, that first day, we went hours without a touch. So after a while, I mean, just because I needed a break, I just tied up a popper and started chucking that around. I stuck with the wood chopper, but he broke the ice. Yeah! The whole <laughs> dark, dark fish. Not my 20 pounder yet, but we gotta start somewhere. But once Joe broke that mold, uh, it gave us a little bit more energy. It gave us hope. And then later that afternoon, we come into this cove and just totally randomly, I saw the hit out of the corner of my eye. And there's our first big fish. Dude, nice fish. He's got him, he's got him. <laughs> <laughs> it works. The wood chopper does work. Do you know, our guide had said a lot of times these fish are in pairs. So he said, throw back in there right away. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Bam. Hit it right there. Another a great five to six pounder. Yeah, boy. And when they crush it, I mean, when they want it, they just jam it. You know, and we spent the rest of that day working really hard. It only ended up popping 
one more small fish before we had to get back to the mothership. That first day was pretty tough, but we learned a lot of stuff. You know, you can go to bed happy knowing that when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna be in primo peacock water. What's up, everybody? Must be nice to get to go to the Amazon. I never get invited, but if I did, I'd know how to pack my rods correctly. Traveling with full length rods sucks, but sometimes you just have to do what you gotta do. For starters, always pack your rods butt to tip. Not only does this let you get more rods in the tube, but as you'll see during the packing process, the fragile tips will have much more support. All you need is a few old socks and some duct tape. Sliding a sock over each end will help keep the rods together and also works as a cushion. And a sock around the middle helps stop the guides from banging against the inside of the tube. And now your rod tube is baggage handler ready. So the next morning we get up and we meet our guide, Eddie, who was actually gonna be our guide for the remainder of the trip. 18 years on Amazon guiding, dude, that'll iron you. So we're in Eddie's boat and we all of a sudden notice, you know, the water's a little bit darker, the water's narrow, and so there's more backwater areas that we can get to. So uh, I wanna break out a fly rod. That fly gear. So Kevin's in the front of the boat chopping away. I'm in the back with the whippy stick, and it did not take very long for me to turn a little butterfly peacock on a popper. Man, he just came up and smoked that little chartreuse popper. I'm sitting up there throwing the wood chopper like any normal guy would do. I get smacked by a five to six pounder. And before you know it, we're picking away at some smaller fish. But the thing is, you never really know where that big bite is gonna come from. Oh, no! And if you're not paying attention, you miss it. The second day with Eddie was way different than the first. Every turn presents something different. We go around the corner and the skies open up. And the water is literally boiling. I mean, it's for all intent and purposes a peacock blitz. Oh, you're right, right there at the boat. Right there at the boat. And we just start whacking them. And once we started moving some fish and catching a few fish, we learned about the dolphins. They are worse than sharks. They will go after your fish, they'll steal a fish. You catch a fish, they're on its tail. Uh-oh. Boom! <laughs> now the thing that I really loved about Eddie was you could tell he wasn't afraid to get after it. At one point, he beaches the boat, he says, come on, we're going for a walk. He knew there was a cutoff water over there, and so we go over there. I mean, white sand flats, I felt like I was bone fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a blast to get out of that boat and to see some new cutoff water. It just goes on and on. I know. You know, we saw a few bigger fish pop out where we couldn't reach them, so we sort of moved on and Eddie says, don't worry, I have another secret spot. It's tight, and so he's kind of weaving his way in and out, jumping logs, banging into stuff. And we're going and we're going, and all of a sudden you come around this bend and you see where this whole thing just opens up into this really gorgeous lake and you just get really excited about it. I honestly feel like we're the only boat that's been back there for quite some time. And you just have this great feeling because you know like these fish are hungry and we're about to feed them. Whoa! And all of a sudden I just get trashed on the end of a long cast. It was just a mega hit and a really, really nice five pounder. That is a chunker, man. You know, this fish fought so hard that when the Tina or 20 finally does it, I can't imagine what that's gonna feel like. I, five casts later, oh, the toilet just got flushed on that popper. As soon as this fish hit, I knew we were dealing with double digits. Oh, dude, I'm shaking. Oh, dude. Got him, we're on straight grade, no leader. He's gotta get this fish in. Got him. Yes! 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 <laughs> That's why you come. Exactly. You know, it was a solid 12 pounder, just a girthy, heavy fish. And you know, it's a great way to end the day when you can finally break double digits. Now that night, we finally reached Rio Negro Lodge. And it is just immaculate. It is paradise in the jungle. You know, and after the day we just had, we were thinking, how much better is this gonna get? There he is. Well, you, my 
friends. We'll have to tune in to part two to find out. Look at that. How pretty they are. Ha, 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 ha.